Uh, one other thing, the lady that runs the uh, food pantry, it's called Feeding Hands, as I mentioned, they're looking for um, another location closer to here than Raritan. And when we were talking about the needs that they had, she said almost identical words, and you didn't know this, but she said almost the identical words. It's like, what we don't want is them to feel like they're being processed. We want them to get out of their car, come in, do an intake questionnaire, ask some questions, and ask if we can pray for them. Because they already feel like another number when they go to these other places. Who's going to have the eternal justice of Jesus as a Christian and say, no, look, we don't think less of you because you need help. Amen. Because we all need help. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But that eternal justice said, I'll take your penalty. And you can come in under the substitutionary work that I'll do for you. And now we are the body of Christ. Meaning... We're his body. We're moving around as his body. He's not here, but we are. Amen. So we can touch things through his cause. And, and because, not because we're trying to earn brownie points, but to say no, what Carolyn said, almost exactly the same words Lois Bennett, who's the founder of Feeding Hands, said, is that they've got to feel loved. And they'll sit here and tell us when they come here, they're like, oh, we really like coming here because the other places... We have to wait in line outside in the cold and wait for our turn. And then they just basically shove something out the door and give us a bag and tell us to get out of the way, to let the next person come. Not us, church, right? And is it really that the root cause is that people just want to feel dignity and humanity shouldn't pull rank on each other. But in, in the secular world, it happens all the time because they don't understand the justice of Jesus or, or this idea that everybody is priceless in the eyes of God. Politics aside, how to solve the problem is what the politicians do. That the problem exists is something we have to know and then decide what we want to do about it. it I don't personally think the answer could be nothing. Maybe you do. That's okay. I'm not putting a guilt trip on anybody. I'm just saying this is what the Lord's been stirring me with and, and why I wanted Carolyn to be up here so you know who one of the people that we're talking about. But, um, and also, like we could just feel that there's a connection with this Feeding Hands ministry and others because it's really tough out there right now. There's a lot of really hurting people. The food pantries are double the normal amount of people that are trying to get help. And they don't, they're shutting their doors because they can't meet the need. And look, uh, again, I made that point enough. Um, any, any closing comments? Because I want to just give a couple of verses sure. before I close. Um, just as you were saying that, Pastor, we, like I said, we meet many people in many walks of life. And to the point you were making, this woman that we had a conversation with last week was someone that came in at the, at the lowest of low. She was pregnant. Um, she was looking for resources. You know, and she said to me, she said, when I walked in, you guys didn't just give me the stuff and put me out. She said, you kept calling me back. Right. How, how else can we help you? Can we connect you with someone? And so as a result, she felt welcomed. Mm -hmm. She felt so welcomed after a couple of encounters with us. She says, I'm coming out with you guys to give the diapers there away. There you go. So she ended up coming to help us give out the diapers that she was once a recipient of. <laughs> And then we had um, a job opening, and just on a whim, we said, well, what about this young lady? <laughs> we said, well, we'll just give her a call. She may not even be qualified. We call her up only to find out she graduated from John Jay College with a BA degree in criminology and social work. There you go. Hidden gem. Can't make this up. Can't make it up can't make this up and so here she comes back to us a seed that we planted now she says and now I want to come in and I want to bless everyone Amen. that I meet just like you guys bless blessed me. to be a blessing <laughs> all right so two things I like to do um, Dan and Sonia if you could stand up too and we, we also support another ministry by Mona Patel down in New Brunswick uh, this is uh, New Destiny Family Success Center Lisa if you could stand also uh, Mona's not here. Just stay out up here for a minute, too. Oh. Uh, one, one more minute. Because I want all of us to pray for them, because they're on the front lines. But then I want Carolyn, because she's got the mic, to release that 
passion in our heart to just keep our eyes open and our ears open. So please stretch your hand towards the people that are standing. Lord, we just thank you for the commitment that it takes. So many hundreds of hours of volunteer time that get put in. And we wonder sometimes, are we really getting the return on the investment? But it's a kingdom investment. And as you gave into us, Lord, we want to give back into those that are in need. And we understand that we're here for such a time as this right now, that there's a tremendous need all around us. And we refuse to just sit by idly and say there's nothing we can do because we know there's much that can be done. So help these leaders that are standing, Lord, have a clear vision on how you want them to move forward. And help us to receive the impartation. Go ahead, Carolyn. Just pray for us to, so to be Father, able to receive. Just, just use I the just, microphone. Oh. Okay. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that your flame, your flame is alive in us. And Lord God, that your passion lives in us. And I thank you, Father, for the living water that you gave us, just like you gave the woman at the well. And you said to her, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again and again. But if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never thirst again and will be forever satisfied. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up and flooding you with endless life. Father, I release endless life. I release endless life. I release streams of living water coming forth out of our bellies that gives life to everyone we meet. Father, I release your love. I release, Father, the fire of Holy Ghost. Lord God, that we would be spurred on, that we would not grow weary and well-doing, but we will awaken, oh God. We will awaken to your call and we will arise and do and be all that you've called us to be and do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'll just give you a little two verses and then we'll close up. Um, uh, Carolyn actually invited this lady, Lourdes, to come to our church and give the testimony before she was moving back to Puerto Rico. And she came to thank us, and I never forgot that because she, you know, she was crying. She said, look, you know, I was homeless. I, I was part of the working poor. I was homeless, and I knocked on the door of this uh, ministry, and here it is a couple years later, and I'm going back to marry the guy I knew in high school and live in, in a beautiful home like talk about redemption all because somebody had the door open when I knocked sounds a little scriptural doesn't it so Jesus said let me in open the door I'm knocking let me in and everybody's going to have their own way of, of um, understanding what the best way to do something is prayer certainly helps right but also making some effort, too. I, I would just really encourage you to pray and ask the Lord because you have a zone where you're most effective that's different than the rest of us. So you really want to find that zone that's going to allow you to flourish in the thing that you're working on. And I actually had gone to the Family Success Center as one of the board members when they were dedicating the new space at the time. It's where they are now, but it was new to them then. And there were some pretty high-level dignitaries there. One was the mayor, who was not very popular with this crowd, I can tell you. So all the people that were, um, what would you say, clients of the Family Success Center were there to cheer on the fact that there was this new building. And they introduce the mayor, and it's like, <laughs> what are these? And then they introduce Lourdes, and the whole place goes crazy, right? Because she was the living example of what they all hoped to be able to see the progress. They need a ray of hope. And if the church isn't giving them that, oh man, we are dropping the ball, okay?